Introducing YouTube Memberships, a fun way to support the channel while getting some exclusive perks. Click the join button to become a member now and get benefits like badges next to your name on videos, behind the scenes photos, advantages during the live trivia game, discounts on merchandise, private one-on-one -on -one video chats, the ability to request future video topics, and exclusive 8-10 to 10 minute videos on the history of the NFL. And now, on with our feature presentation. If you've ever been to an NFL game, or heck, anytime you watch one on television if it's a playoff game, you've seen this situation a million times before. The team gets introduced onto the field, they run through the tunnel, and they get all hyped up as the fans go wild. Every football game you go to has some sort of ritual like this. Whether it's a high school team running through a banner made by cheerleaders, Virginia Tech running out to enter Sandman, or a pro team running through a life-size version of the team's mascot head. The processional of the team running out is not just a way to get the players hyped up, but a way to get the fans hyped up. And it's a situation where just about nothing can go wrong. You're not going to see the players getting hurt during this process, right? I mean, that would be absolutely insane. You're just jogging out of a tunnel. And heck, if you're already done jogging out of the tunnel because you're one of the first players through, you're already good. Getting injured during something like this would be incredibly fluky and incredibly unlucky. Well, this man right here is Miami Dolphins kicker Olindo Mare. And at his peak, he was one of the best kickers in all of football. As in, at one point, he was the all-time leader in field goal percentage across all of NFL history. We'll talk more about him in just a bit, but he's best known for his 10 seasons with the Miami Dolphins, where he truly established himself as one of the best kickers in the entire sport. But of all the games he had for the Dolphins over his decade with the team, and of all the games he had over his more than decade and a half long career in the NFL, lasting all the way until 2012 when he was 39 years old, perhaps none were as memorable for him as what happened during a 2002 contest against the New York Jets. Because somehow, during this game, Mari found a way to get injured during the pregame processional. And it's not in the way that you might think. Let's just say that something went horribly, horribly wrong. And I'm assuming that someone got fired after this entire debacle. Because this is the story behind Alindo Mare and one of the craziest injuries considering the circumstances in the near 60-year history of the Miami Dolphins franchise. Before I talk about the injury in question, we need some context to understand the importance of this game, how the game was going, and most importantly, just how good Alindo Mare was. It's September 22nd, 2002. It's week three of the NFL season. And as we've officially hit autumn, we've got a big game in the AFC East on our hands down in Miami at Pro Player Stadium between the New York Jets and the Miami Dolphins. Both of these teams feel the importance of this early game. For the Dolphins, they're off to a great start at 2-0, with one of those wins coming during the opening week of the season against the Detroit Lions in a game that I talked about in a previous video of mine. To learn more about that game, and a bizarre broadcasting controversy that relates to it, click the card in the upper right corner. Win this game, and you can keep a hold on first place in the AFC East, since you enter this game tied with the New England Patriots atop the division at 2-0. As for the Jets, they're 1-1, one and, one, and while a win could potentially put them in a tie for the division lead, a loss could be dangerous, putting them two back already of the division lead three games into the season. Obviously, there's plenty of time left in the year, and no one is suggesting otherwise. But you don't want to create too big of a hole for yourself this early on in the year to dig out of. As for how this game was going, well, at the start, it was all Miami. Even though the Dolphins' offense had stalled over their final two drives before the drive in question, being forced to punt both times, the Dolphins were holding on to a 13-3 lead after taking advantage of some great Jets field position. Twice, the Dolphins started inside New York's 26-yard line, 
and twice, they were able to convert it into scoring opportunities. The defense picked off Vinny Testaverde multiple times, and was having a heck of a game, as through New York's seven drives, the Jets had just one field goal, two interceptions, and four punts. With the most recent drive being a quick three and out, that took no time off of the clock whatsoever, the Dolphins were now getting the ball back with enough time, especially since they had all three of their timeouts, to potentially lead a two-minute drill and extend their lead even further. Which takes us to this moment in the game right here. The Dolphins, after starting a two-minute drill of their own 29-yard line, take it all the way into New York's red zone, just cruising down the field with ease thanks to six completions, including two big ones on third down, by their starting quarterback, Jay Fiedler. If you can punch it in here and make it a 17-point game, especially considering the fact that you get the ball back to start the second half, not only do you have a chance to double up, but you can really put this game away and prevent any hope of a comeback. Well, I shouldn't say that. I mean, Dolphin fans knew all too well about the possibility of the Jets coming back, as we weren't even two full years removed from the Monday Night Miracle, where a 30-3 lead wasn't even safe. But you get the idea. Any points on this drive would be absolutely great for Miami. And while the bad news was that the Dolphins could not score a touchdown to make it a three-possession game, as Jay Feeler threw three straight incomplete passes to try for the end zone, the good news was that they had a Lindo Mari coming on for the field goal from 31 yards out. Now, for most kickers, a 31-yard kick is an absolute chip shot. Heck, today, it's one yard shorter than an extra point. And while this is an easy kick for most kickers, Alindo Mare is not like most kickers. Because you see, Alindo Mare is one of the best kickers in football. If a 31-yard kick for most kickers in the league at the time was like a two-foot putt, for Mare, it was like a tap-in with the ball sitting halfway on the cup. In early 2000s terms, Mare hitting a 31-yard kick had roughly the same success rate as a contestant on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire correctly answering the $100 question. Barring something absurd, it's going to happen. As you've seen through these highlights, Alindo Mari entered the 2002 season and entered this game as one of the best kickers in all of football. Heck, he might have been the best kicker in football. After being named an AP First Team All-Pro and a Pro Bowler in 1999, when he led the league with 39 May field goals, he had an even better season in 2000 when he hit on 90.3% of his kicks, and followed that up in 2001 by leading the entire NFL by hitting on 90.5% of his kicks. He had back-to-back -back seasons hitting over 90% of his kicks, and this was at a time when the league-wide average was in the ballpark of 77%. And as reliable as Mari was, from a short distance, he was automatic. During the 2001 season, as you're watching, Mari had 17 field goals from inside of 40 yards. He hit on all 17 of them. Nothing short of perfection. Mari was never really known for his cannon of a leg. He never hit a field goal longer than 53 yards in his entire career. And over the course of his career, he went just 19 for 43 from 50 plus yards, hitting less than 50% of the time. But where he shined was with how reliable he was from that short distance. It's almost like the golfer that won't beat you by outdriving you, but will beat you by just being incredible from 100 yards and in, and with a great short game. That's what Maury was. At this point in his career, in five seasons, Maury attempted 107 kicks from inside of 40 yards. He hit on 101 of them. That's a percentage of 94.3%. And keep in mind that three of those misses came when he was a rookie. So if we're just counting his last four seasons from 1998 to 2001, he hit on 77 out of 80 attempts, or 96.3% of them. Keep in mind that during the 2002 playoffs, Dallas Cowboys kicker Brett Maher missed four extra points against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. If those kicks counted as field goals, then you could say that Maher missed more kicks from inside of 40 in one game 
than Mari missed over an entire four-year period. That's how good he was. So we know what's at stake. We know the importance of this kick in terms of giving the Dolphins some momentum going into the half, especially after their offense had stalled recently. We know how good Alindo Mari is, and how this kick should be a chip shot that you don't even think twice about. So with all that being said, let's watch this kick unfold. Roll the tape. Gets it away. Oh, he hooked it to the left. Olindo Mare is automatic from that distance, except on this occasion with two seconds to play in the first half. Huh, that's, uh, that's odd. Olindo Mare missed the field goal from that distance? That doesn't seem to add up or make any sense. What the heck was wrong? The field conditions were good. The stat was good. The hole was good, and the blocking was good. This kid, considering everything we know and what history tells us, should not have missed. Was Mari not healthy or something? Was there an injury that we didn't necessarily know about impacting him during this play? Amazingly enough, yes. Yes, there was. And you're not going to believe what it was. You see, during pregame introductions, what usually happens is that the special teams players run out onto the field first. They're on the field before the rest of the team is out there, and they're just going through some warm-ups to get some extra reps in. The reason for this makes sense. You don't want your leg to be too cold, especially since there's a 50-50 chance, depending on who receives in the first half, that you're the first person to touch the ball as you're kicking it off. On top of that, special teams players don't get a chance to warm up on the field for the hour before, because the rest of the team is out there stretching, and you can't exactly kick field goals while 53 other guys are warming up on your side of the field. There's just not enough space. The last time they kicked the ball was probably about an hour before. And special teams players can't get a chance to warm up after, because you have other festivities taking place on the field. These warm-ups during the pregame introductions while the players are being introduced are, in many ways, the last chance for a kicker to warm up before the game starts and practice field goals. And that's exactly what Mario was doing. He was minding his own business, practicing field goals and kicks like he always does. And as the Dolphins were getting introduced, the Dolphins decided to introduce an element of the introductions that is pretty commonplace for many NFL teams. Of course, I'm talking about the element of pyrotechnics. And I'm pretty sure you can see where this one might be going. Because as the Dolphins were being introduced as a team, and then one by one depending on who the starters were, fireworks were being launched. And sure enough, in a pregame introduction gone horribly, horribly wrong, debris from one of the fireworks got a little too close and ended up hitting Mari square in the eye. Mari was just kicking field goals and feeling fine, and the next thing you know, he couldn't see, and was feeling pain in his left eye because he got hit with debris from a firework. Oddly enough, this is not the first time I've talked about a firework incident got awry before on the channel, as I talked about the time that this happened at the Super Bowl 18 halftime show and caused a catastrophe. You can learn more about that by clicking the card in the upper right corner. And heck, this is not even the first time I've talked about a firework incident on a ride before that took place in Miami, as this happened two decades prior at a disastrous Orange Bowl halftime show, which you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner. But whereas with the other two incidents, it was fans getting injured, this time, it was a player and one of their own players nonetheless. The Dolphins had pyrotechnics to hype their players up, and instead, it did the opposite, and resulted in disaster, with one of their players getting injured before the game even started. And the debris was so bad that it required serious medical attention, which obviously makes it a bit tough to go kick and go on as normal, seeing as a freaking firework just landed in your eye said Mari on the bizarre nature of the injury, it was kind of shocking. 
You think how fast you can blink your eye, but not that fast. Now, being the professional that Mare was, he did not use the fireworks debris as an excuse for missing the 31-yard field goal. But it definitely didn't help Matt as much. I think that's fair to say. It's almost like if I'm playing pickleball, and before the match, some idiot playing on a court that's a solid three courts away from me, so they weren't even anywhere near me, so I don't know why they would even mistake it for such, mistakes my hydro flask for theirs. So they take it and just start drinking from it. Meaning that during the match, I have no hydration options whatsoever. And I've got to play the match with no water and 100 degree heat, because of course I chose to live in the middle of a desert. Not that this happened to me last night or anything. Like, was that the reason I lost the match? Absolutely not. But did it contribute in some capacity at least? Probably. Much like I would have played better if I was properly hydrated, a window Mori would have played better if he didn't have a firework landing in his eye. As for how this game turned out between the two teams behind me in the New York Jets and the Miami Dolphins, the good news for the Dolphins was that in the long run, this missed kick did not end up mattering as they won the game by 27 points, taking it, oddly enough, by a final score of 30-3, in a game that the Dolphins just absolutely dominated, as Vinny Testaverde, the quarterback on the Jets, threw no touchdowns, two interceptions, and had a passer rating of 36.2, which is worse than if he did nothing but spike the ball into the ground on every single play. Miami also more than doubled New York's total yardage in the process. As a side note, there are four helmets behind me with the Saints, Seahawks, Panthers, and Bears that I did not mention in this video, but they do relate to the video in some way. So if you can figure out what that connection is, let me know in the comments down below. So what do we learn from all of this? If you're going to launch fireworks during a game as part of the pregame introductions, for the love of God, make sure that one of the fireworks doesn't wind up hitting one of your own players and being completely counterintuitive to the whole point of having pyrotechnics in the first place. Pyrotechnics are cool. Pyrotechnics are fun. Pyrotechnics are neat to look at. But if they get people hurt, and your own players nonetheless, then it defeats the entire purpose of having pyrotechnics in the first place. Because in 2002, during this game against the New York Jets, Alindo Mare had trouble keeping his eye on the ball. Quite literally, because his left eye was filled with firework debris. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe, as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.